on behalf of everyone whose story could only be written in the greatest nation on earth. I accept your nomination. Kamala Harris's career in politics has been full of historic firsts. She is the first woman of African American and Asian American descent to serve as San Francisco's district attorney, California's attorney general, and the vice president of the United States of America. Now she sets out to become the first woman to serve as president of the United States of America. Harris's history-making journey was powered by her phenomenal educational journey. Kamala Harris was born in Oakland, California to Shyamala Gopala and Donald J. Harris. Harris comes from academic greatness as both her parents attended the University of California, Berkeley. Her mother's research on the progesterone receptor gene led to advances in breast cancer research, while her father specialized in economics and was the first black scholar to be granted tenure at Stanford University's economics department. It was no doubt that Harris would continue the trend of educational success in her family. Harris attended high school at Westmount High School in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, after her mother accepted her research position at the McGill University School of Medicine. After graduation, Harris attended Vanier College in Montreal before she transferred to Howard University. She officially made the transition to the Mecca in the fall of 1982. There, she grew into the woman she is today. Per a 2019 article featured in the Washington Post, Harris started her journey at Howard University at the age of 17. Washington Post writer Robin Given says that her classmates remember her for her big earrings and red lipstick as a cool girl who was friendly with an infectious laugh. For Harris, her time at Howard University was a uniquely different experience. She'd attended predominantly white educational institutions for her entire life. Harris's time at Howard allowed her to be around people who look like her and share similar beliefs and interests. Harris even says that her HBCU experience helped shape her. Let me tell you, I am who I am today for two reasons. Because of my mother and the family I was raised in and Howard University and HBCU. What you and I know, when we walked onto that campus for the first time, we were surrounded by people that look like us. All, everywhere, everybody. Um, you walk onto, and I'll just speak about Howard, but I know Hampton is the same. Mm -hmm. You walk onto that campus, you can look over one area and you will see a bunch of young African Americans who are students who are in the business school walking around with briefcases. You look over at another area and they're walking around in leotards because they're in the, the, the School of Fine Arts. The, the football captain and star and the homecoming queen and the debate team and there are sororities and fraternities. And what you learn at an HBCU is you do not have to fit into somebody's limited perspective on what it means to be young, gifted, and black. Kamala Harris made her impact felt immediately when she got on campus. She campaigned to become a freshman representative on the Liberal Arts Student Council. She ultimately won her race and started her journey in politics, although in a very different way as a student leader. Harris also joined the debate team, honing skills that have helped her in her time as politics as she's created several memorable debate moments in her career. We've also heard, and I'm gonna now direct this at Vice President Biden, I do not believe you are a racist. And I agree with you when you commit yourself to the importance of finding common ground. But I also believe, and it's personal, and I was actually very, it was hurtful, to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. And it was not only that, but you also worked with them to oppose busing. And, you know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. And I'm gonna actually do something really unusual, and I'm gonna invite you to attend one of Donald Trump's rallies, because it's a really interesting thing to watch. And what you will also notice is that people start leaving his rallies early out of exhaustion and boredom. And I will tell you, the one thing you will not hear him talk about is you. Harris also used her voice as a student leader to speak out against injustice. As a freshman, Harris was one of the students at Howard University who took over the administration building, also known as the A Building. According to a 2019 article from the Washington Post, 
The 1983 protest arose following the decision of then University President James Cheek to expel Janice McKnight, the editor of the Hilltop student newspaper. McKnight had published allegations from a Howard employee regarding discrimination at the university. School officials stated the expulsion was due to McKnight allegedly providing false information on her application to Howard. Harris was one of about 200 students who overtook the building, calling for Cheek's resignation. Although Cheek did not resign, the protest ended the next day and McKnight was reinstated to her position. This wasn't the first time that Harris would take to activism to make her voice heard on the issues of the day. She also protested apartheid, joining other Howard students in protest at the National Mall and the South African Embassy. She spoke about the importance of standing up for what's right when she addressed Howard University's spring 2017 graduates. You must speak truth. And let me be clear. Speaking the truth is different from telling the truth. Telling the truth means separating fact from fiction. The earth is round. The sky is blue. Howard University is the real HU. Yeah. <laughs> Speak the truth. But unlike, but unlike telling the truth, speaking the truth means you must speak up and you must speak out, even when you're not being asked. Harris also achieved other amazing things in her time at Howard University, including being initiated into the Alpha chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Harris spoke about her sorority experience with ESPN's Jay Walker and Tiffany Green, during the 2023 Celebration Bowl on ABC. Well, you know, I talk with students all the time about the fact that that sisterhood, or, you know, if you join a fraternity, that brotherhood, is, it's a lifetime. Um, I, I, I initiated with 37 other young women. There were 38 of us. We are very close to this day, these many decades later. And it's an enduring sisterhood. It, it includes not only those that you join with, but those you see all around, the, literally around the world. In 1986, Harris proudly graduated from Howard University, earning a bachelor's degree in political science and economics. But her graduation day was surely another HBCU moment that she'll never forget, according to a story she told Sherry Shepard. Vice President, is it true that you hitchhiked to your graduation? Yes. What, what happened? What had happened? So, what had happened was, <laughs> we, we were running late. <laughs> really? And me and some of my girlfriends, and we all met in the hallway at the door, and we were like, we gotta get there, and it was too late to catch the bus, uh -huh. and we couldn't get a taxi, and so we said, well, let's just hitchhike. Yeah. And so we hitchhiked to, to graduation. graduation. We did. In your cap and gown? In, and, our, in our dresses and everything. In your dresses. And it was a very nice gentleman who, who said, y'all shouldn't be hitchhiking. <laughs> <laughs> God loves you. <laughs> and it was like a grandfather type and said, come on, I'll take you, you know. Yeah. And that's, that's how we got and to graduation. And you made it safe and sound. Yeah. Thank you, sir, <laughs> whoever you were. Her HBCU experience laid the foundation for a remarkable career dedicated to public service and leadership, showcasing the impact of education on her journey. And now, she could be on her way to making history.